Thing. Hi there, welcome back. Dr Zoe is with us now Hello, and she has a question for you. Uh, would you know what to do if someone had an epileptic seizure in front of you? Yeah, more than a third of us say we wouldn't know the steps to take that could save a life. But with today being International Epilepsy Day, Dr Zoe says it's a perfect opportunity to learn. Good morning, Good morning. Zoe. This is a great idea. Um, first of all, can we start off, what exactly is epilepsy? Yes, so, so epilepsy, so first of all, the brain is yeah. full of brain cells and the way that those brain cells communicate with each other is um, by sending me messages, chemical messages, and that creates electricity in the brain. So a seizure happens when there's a burst of abnormal electrical activity in the brain, and that affects the signals that the brain sends then to the rest of the body. Okay. So anybody can actually have a one-off seizure. We all okay. are capable of having a seizure if we hit a certain threshold that we have these abnormal bursts of electricity, but some people are more prone than, than others. And if people have repeated seizures, then, then it's called epilepsy. It's a long-term condition. Okay. Um, some people, it resolves and get better, but yeah. for many people, it becomes a lifelong condition. How many people are affected in the UK? It's fairly common, probably more Is than it? most people think. So one in 100 people. Yeah. So that's 630,000 people in the UK, um, and 80 people are diagnosed every day. So it's fairly common. We will probably all know somebody okay. um, in our wider circle who has epilepsy. And are there certain situations that can bring on an attack? Like, can you develop it as well? Yeah, like, like, like if you're in a situation, then, you know, that in the back of your mind, you should keep a lookout. So triggers, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, first, it tends to first present either in children or okay. in people over the age of 60, but it can occur at any time. Mm. And I think the trigger that people are aware of is flashing lights. Sure. Yes. And I know here on the show, um, when we're certainly going to um, awards events and what have you, and there are lots of cameras, it's all tested so that it doesn't trigger epilepsy. And we put warnings out as well, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see Absolutely. that more and more. Mm. So people tend to be aware, but that's actually quite a rare trigger. More common triggers are things like stress, not having enough sleep, excitement, drinking too much alcohol, certain drugs. Um, so there are lots of th more everyday things. So people who have epilepsy, certainly as part of their care, they'll, they'll start to try and identify what the triggers are right. and, and avoid them. Sense them coming. Yeah. Can we develop it, though? I mean, so are you saying that actually all of us are susceptible potentially to having one of these fits? Is it something that's hereditary? How does it work? So... In, in quite a significant number of people who have epilepsy, we don't know why. There's no specific cause. Um, there are some genetic predispositions to it, mm -hmm. uh, and it can sometimes run in families. It can occur as a result of a head injury or a stroke. Mm -hmm. um, it can occur if people have had certain types of infections that have affected the brain as well. So sometimes there is a known cause, mm -hmm. but often actually there isn't. Um, I think there are so many myths surrounding it as well. It yeah. was like when I was reading through the notes and I, was, I thought people could bite their tongue and you had to like clear an airway, but that's not the case. So th there are lots of myths. Yes, so, so, so one of the many. myths is swallowing the tongue. Yes. yes. Which is not possible. You can't swallow your tongue. So that's a myth. Um, so where does people... that come from though? Why do we think that that's the I'm case? I'm not sure. And there used to be this old fashioned idea, please don't do this anybody, where you should put something in the person's mouth to stop them swallowing their tongue, right. but don't do that. Okay. That's more likely to cause injury. Um, uh, people can bite their tongue. Um, that is something that people can do. I think one of the commonest myths is that people, when we see people having a seizure on TV, mm. it tends to be a, a, what we call a tonic-clonic seizure. So you tend to see the person go quite rigid, yes. Yes. lose consciousness, and then tend to have some sort of jerking movement. Convulsing, yeah. Um, but there are over 60 different types of seizures. That's just one type. And about one in four people will have those types of seizures. There are many other types. So sometimes in children, we see something called an absence seizure. Right. And this is when they just, the teacher might be asking them a question and they don't respond. They're sort of just looking into space oh. for a few seconds. Or somebody might throw a ball at them and they don't pick it up. Um, so that could be a seizure? That can be a seizure. Wow. There are seizures called myoclonic seizures, where it's just one part of the body moves. So sometimes this can be dismissed as being clumsy if a child keeps dropping things or somebody keeps spilling their tea, yeah. whereas actually that can be a form of, of epilepsy as well. Um, depending on where the seizure, this electrical impulse originates in the brain, it can be motor, so that affects your movements. It can be sensory, so people might experience pain or tingling or numbness, and that can be a seizure. It can affect the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that's involved in emotions. Mm -hmm. So somebody might have outbursts of crying or laughing or severe panic, oh, and that can be a seizure. So I think that's the biggest myth, is that people think an epileptic seizure 
is it's this combination of losing what you see in drama and rigidity, yeah. Yeah. whereas actually that's only in one, one of four cases. So okay. I think the epilepsy, the, the epilepsy community, that is the message I think they would want me to say more than any, anything else, is that there are many different ways in which yeah. seizures can present. Now, okay. if somebody happened to have a seizure and, and we would be there, I'm not sure I would necessarily know what to do, no, but you're going to give us a demonstration, aren't you, so, so yes. we do know. So Fleur is going to come in. Morning, Fleur. Morning, Fleur. Thank you so much. She's going to lie next to me. So, um, Epilepsy Action, the UK charity, have developed this first aid protocol for somebody having a seizure so that everybody knows what, what to do. It's really straightforward. You just have to remember the word care. care. C-A-R-E. So if you approach somebody who's had a seizure, the first thing you want to do is C, and that's comfort. So you want to pop a pillow, if you yeah. happen to have one, under their head to support their head and neck mm -hmm. and make sure they're comfortable. So, sorry, Dr Zoe, if she was convulsing now, yeah. would you still do the same thing? You wouldn't yeah. wait for her to go still? No, no. Okay. So, you know, as long as it's safe for you to approach, if they're making very big movements and it doesn't feel safe, you don't need to. But okay. if they're making movements, then, yeah. So, C is for comfort. Amazing. A is for action. And this is where you've got five minutes here to think about the things that are sensible to do. So, I'm going to ask you, Kat, to set a five-minute timer on your phone and let me know if it reaches five minutes. OK, I'll ask my assistant. All right, I'm on five it. Minutes. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so, the next thing, I want to make sure she's safe. I'm not going to move her, yeah. but there may be things around her. There may be glass, there yeah. may be furniture. Yeah. So I'm going to move that over there a little bit. Amazing. So if she moves to think about her being safe. I'm going to have a look for any medical bracelets or any ID cards, because that might give me further instructions. Somebody with epilepsy might carry that. Do, do they That's normally, do. or is, is it like 90% of time they have one of those? I'm actually, I'm actually not sure. It's sort of down to the person. Okay. It might be whether or not they need specific actions to be taken. Gotcha. So have a look in their wallet as well, or ask Ben. I'm going to ask you to have a look in Fleur's bag and see if you can find any Oh, idea. I'd love to you bring around in Fleur's bag. There's all sorts of lip gloss, <laughs> but you can look for a And cover. this is when you might start panicking, thinking, somebody do something, do something, but actually you're just supporting this person, making sure they're safe. Yeah. Um, next is R. So if Fleur starts coming round, mm. really important to reassure her. It's all right, Fleur, you've had a seizure, but you're fine. I'm here, I'm staying with you. It's only been two minutes. So you just rest, stay relaxed, stay calm. Everything's OK. And then the third one is E, and that's yeah. when is it an emergency? If it's the first seizure, if it's lasted more than five minutes, okay. if they're having repeated seizures, or if she's not breathing properly when she's come round or she's injured herself in any way, mm. then we're going to call 999 without delay. I think that's so good to set the timer because when all this is going on, you completely lose track of time, time it's, don't you? It's a long time. It is a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's going on. You'll feel like it's now, ages. So, so, so it's care, C A R. E. Thank you so much, Fleur. OK. And then when they do come around, do you give them a drink of water? Do you... Do... Yeah, so just... they'll often... Just let them wake up gradually and slowly and keep them safe. If they can manage a sip of water safely, that's absolutely fine. OK. And just take good care of them. Okay. Amazing. So thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, undoubtedly will help some people. Yes, some point, for sure. And, and busted some myths as yeah. well. Thanks, Fleur. Thank you, Fleur. <laughs> uh, right, competition time now.